Hello? Oh my gosh. No, it works. It works. <laughs> you only scared me a little bit. Sorry about that. Test, test, test. Test, 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 test. There we go. Yeah, 
So I, like I said, I love books, I love self-help books, and so I'm gonna share a story from one that I read probably about six, uh, yeah, about six months ago. So this lady, her name is Carol Dweck. She studied the brain for 30 years. And obviously we've learned so much about the brain in the last 30 years. It's so much more malleable and we can and obtain, oh sorry, retain so much more information than we initially thought. And not just with young kids, but with adults. So she took this 30 years of information and research and tried to put it in practice. So she went to an Arizona um, elementary school and she took a second grade class, same students, and she broke them into two different groups, okay? So the first group was taught nothing different than they had been. The second group had been taught about growth mindset. What's a growth mindset? Now growth mindset, so there's two different mindsets. There's a fixed and a growth. If you have a fixed mindset, you kind of in a nutshell believe that like, certain people are born smart. Now with growth mindset, you believe more that persistence and hard work lead to intelligence. It's not just something you were born with. Now I will be, I'll be totally honest. When I read this book, I completely was in the fixed mindset. I was like, and this is why. So I was the type of student that I would always have homework every night. I took, when we had to take the ACTs, I did, took numerous study classes. I took many practice tests, and on the other hand, my husband, so he, we went to school together. You guys, I'm not kidding. I did that once a presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I got it for you. You can see it for talking. Oh, thanks. There you go. Thank you. So now we got that out of the way. So anyways, my husband was the kind that never had homework because he always finished it in school. He never studied for the test. He just woke up and went to, and took his ACT, and guess what? We had almost identical grades. He, so our brain will try to make sense of things, of the information that we have, especially with patterns and come to conclusions. So the conclusion I came to as a kid was I'm not smart because things didn't come super easily to me. But that's exactly what this Carol Dweck is trying to dispel. That that's not what necessarily equals intelligence, it's being born with it. So she took the second grade class. Split it in two. The first half, they were just taught normal. Both classes were taught the exact same material. But the second group was taught about the growth mindset. So they were taught to so embrace challenges, persist in the face of setbacks, see effort to path as a path to mastery, learn from criticism, and find lessons and inspiration in hardship. So and then with fixed mindset, like I said, not, I mean the first first set of the class taught nothing different. The second set taught about the growth mindset. That if you fail the first time, it doesn't mean you are a failure. If you keep working, try different resources, try different ways, seek help if you need to. At the end of that school year, the class who was taught the growth mindset scored 60% higher than the class that wasn't taught anything. Now she also did this with a school in Washington. She went and she did it on a bigger level. So in Washington, their schools are ranked from a one to a five. Five are the top performing, one of the least performing. And if you're underperforming for three years, they will shut your school down. So we had a school that was in its last year. It's gonna be shut down. She went in with a big team. They taught the entire school about the growth mindset. And in one year, she took the school from a one to a four. So what do you guys think this has anything to do with debt recovery. Any ideas? Why, why in the world would I tell you this? You guys see. Everybody's eating right now, so I'm gonna give you a pass. <laughs> so, like Amanda said, I've worked here for 13 years. i worked here in a variety of capacities. I started here right out of high school and as a collector. So I worked in a collections department collecting on past due bills. I was then a teller and a loan officer, and I trained tellers and loan officers, and now I work in financial education. And I will tell you that something that I've heard consistently throughout all of my positions is, I'm not good with money. I don't know if you've ever told yourself that, hopefully not, but it is something that I've heard. Oh, I'm not the great with managing that, or I hate budgeting. I'm not good with budgeting. Is that a growth or a fixed mindset? Fixed, yeah, absolutely. 
So before we get into any of these techniques, before we get into debt management, the first thing that I want you guys to try to change is your attitude. If you're telling yourself, I'm not good with money, or I hate budgeting, or I don't want to do it, I want to put any effort, the first thing I want you to tell yourself is that persistence equals success. Don't let these challenges stop you and define you. So now, this is that, the attitude, right? Your, your responsibility is your attitude. My responsibility is to give you some techniques to pay off your debt. So let's get into some of those. So here's some signs that you might be over your head in debt. Now growing up, I had a friend who, her mom, I remember hearing her on the phone would be like, she'd call to pay off the debt, or to make a monthly payment, and she'd be like, they'd be like, hi, discover, or whatever, and she'd be like, do not tell me my balance. I just tell me my minimum payment and I'll make it. Is that a sign you may be in over your head with debt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so why you're spending more than you're making. This seems pretty, like you would know, right? If you're spending more than you're making. How would you not know? Because I was always surprised, especially as a loan officer, how often people did not know they were spending more than they were making. They don't have a budget. They don't have a budget, yeah. Or they don't track what they are spending. They don't track what they're spending, absolutely. Any other ideas? So a lot of times people will use their credit card to pay for things, which is totally great. You've got numerous rewards, it has so many benefits. But then what they would do is that they tell themselves, oh, I'm gonna pay off all my credit card at the end of the month. Then the end of the month would come and they'd be like $100 short, or maybe $200 or $300 short. That would kind of consistently happen throughout the year and their balances would start to add up. So that's a sign that you're spending more than you're making. Your credit card, and along with that, those credit card balances are growing. Um, you're declined for a loan. You only make your minimum payments. You're close or at your credit limits. And then your credit score is falling. You can be making all of your monthly payments on time, but did you know that you can still, that can, um, your credit score, oh, guys, your credit score can still fall. Why do you guys think that is? So your utilization rate. So if you are at your max on your credit cards, it's going to basically signify to a lender that you're not able to handle the amount of debt that you currently have. So they're not gonna be willing to lend you more. So it will usually affect your credit score negatively. So these are the things we're gonna do, we're gonna cover today. Well, the steps to get out of debt. The first one is organize your debt. Commit to no more debt. Seek professional help if you need it. Review your household budget and then choose a repayment strategy. So let's get into organizing your debt. Give me some ideas. How would you organize some of your debt? How do you guys organize your debt? Or even your finances? How do you keep up? How do you organize it? How do you keep track of it? Spreadsheet. Spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet, yes, perfect. Very effective. Mint, yes, love mint. What are some other ways you guys keep track of a budget? Maybe pen and paper, an app. So the very first thing, however you do it, whether you do it with your mint, whether you do it through an Excel, whether you do it with pen and paper, you're going to, the important thing is that you're doing it right. You're gonna give yourself a clear picture of what you're dealing with. So it's telling yourself, right, that like, I'm gonna pay off debt. It's a decent goal, but unless you have a technique and a way to get um, to follow through with that, you might not be as effective. So you're gonna, first thing you're gonna do is organize your debt. So these are some different types of debt. With this, also what you can do, if you want, you can get a report, um, a free credit report once a year from annualcreditreport.com. And on your credit, it will show anybody that you are owing money. So a lot of times, especially people who have a lot of student loans, student loans, their lenders change often. So if you're like, I, I know I have this student loan or this student loan, I think I have this one still, I think it's with this lender, but it could be through this one. Getting a free credit report is a good place to start because it gives you a clear picture of all of your debt, especially student loans. Committing to no more debt. So this says, debt affects more than just your credit score. It also impacts your psychological health. Studies show debt weighs heavily on your mental health, and paying it off may reduce your stress and improve your psychological well-being. 
You guys believe that? So give me an idea of how you could commit to no more debt. I guess some commitments. Maybe if you're having a hard time with your credit card, yeah, maybe no longer using your credit card, trying to stick with your debit card. Along those same lines, how many of you find it easier to spend cash versus your card? Is it easier sometimes we tend to spend a little bit more money with our debit card than we do with cash? Right? Cash is tangible. We can see it going. That could be another way to commit to it. I have a sister-in-law that not this past year, but the year before. Uh, she got a family together. Well, she didn't get a family together. We were at a family gathering, and she said that she's like, we just want, me, Josh, just want to let you guys know that we are going to be doing the Dave Ramsey method. So that's like paying off debt. Um, and it's very, very strict. She's like, so there'll be some family events that we won't attend because that's not our priority this year. Do you think there was a single person in that room that was like, boo? <laughs> <laughs> right? People were like, what do you think? If, so if someone tells you, like, this is what we're trying to do, we were, we were very, very supportive. That's a great goal to have. And then throughout the year, what, how do you think we planned our activities? Tried to make them free. Tried to make them very less expensive. It was, we could try to support her as much as we could. So sharing your goals is one way that you can commit to no more debt, maybe have it handling cash instead of your card. However it is, you definitely want to start with your commitment because debt repayment, it's a long process. And it can be hard. And sometimes we lose motivation along the way. So let's talk about those things. So first thing, if you need it, seeking professional advice. And this isn't like you need professional advice. Right. This isn't a bad thing. This is a good thing. This is a great thing. One of the first places you can start is at Mountain America. You can come in and talk to Amanda here. We've got a financial value analyzer. So what this will do is it will pull information from your credit. We can see if we can lower your interest rate to lower your monthly payments, and then we may be able to save you money. We'll talk about some ways that we do that, like debt consolidation and home equity lines a little bit later. Next is Green Path Financial. So, I was just telling Natalie this. I, I keep wanting to put this down, but I need to hold it. Sorry, guys. I'm not used to having two things in my hand. I very rarely have a microphone. But at least I'm not sitting down on the microphone. So, just telling Natalie this, that I worked with Mountain America for 13 years. She was sharing that she collects on some debts here at Daybreak. And I was saying, no, that's exactly how my husband and I put ourselves through college, is that we worked in collections. And that was actually, so I went from a really, really big company to Mountain America. This wasn't last year, it was 13 years ago. But I was shocked because I would like, I'd be talking to a customer and my boss would come in his office and he'd be like, whoa, hey, let's tone down the tone. Well, how can we help this member? What's in the member's best interest? And I was so surprised that Mountain America like legitimately cared. It wasn't just a number. It wasn't just money to be collected. It was a relationship to be built. And so I thought, in my young mind, if this is how Mountain America treats, maybe as others would view it, their worst member, how well do they treat their best member? And 13 years later, I'm still here, because I believe that Mountain America still embodies that. Now, Green Path is something that helps us. Mountain America would love it that if you ever had a question, or you were feeling like, I don't know where to start, you could come in and you could talk to any loan officer. They would have an hour to spend with you and give you their undivided attention. But the reality is that sometimes the branches get busy. A lot of times people come at the same time and we can't always give that um, undivided attention, but we, it is still a top priority for us. So we partnered with Green Path Financial. These are certified financial advisors that you can call. They will help you with debt consolidation. They'll help you with um, setting up a budget that they can pull your credit with you, go over your credit, um, help give you ideas on how to improve your credit. Um, student loan repayment, they can even help you sort of a plan to buy your first home. We love them, we would recommend them if we didn't feel that they could provide a top level service to our members. So you can start here, you can start with Mountain America, you can come in and talk to us, or you can also do Green Path Financial. I've got some pamphlets if you are interested after this. Next is reviewing your budget. What do you guys think of budget? Has to do with debt repayment. Knowing how much you actually have to spend. Exactly. How you're spending your money. How you're spending your money. Absolutely. So a great place to start with your budget. 
So make sure you're paying all your bills first. Okay. And then what you're going to do, well, I'm going to give you some techniques, but you're going to make your debt repayment a bill. It's going to be one of the first things that you pay before you go doing anything else, before you do anything else. It becomes a bill. This is what a healthy budget looks like. With 35% housing, this is everything in your house. This isn't just 30, this isn't just your house payment. These are your utilities, your maintenance, your insurance. Same thing with your vehicle, transportation at 15%. Uh, that's your insurance, that's your gas, that's all of those things. I actually had, so when we did, a, we did this presentation in a high school, and this girl raised her hand. Uh, so 25, I mean 10% in savings. And she said, how come only 10%? And it is, why only 10%? She's like, why don't you just, she's like, why don't you save like 40%? Now it would be awesome, right, if we could all save 40% of our income. We had no other responsibilities. I'm like, we're just going to save it all. I won't pay the rest of those bills because it's going in savings. We have obligations, right? We have other bills that we need to pay. But we want to make sure that we're at least setting aside 10% for our savings, our emergency fund. And again, that gets treated as a bill as well. It's one of the, you pay that first before you go do anything, before you're going out for the weekend, before you're going to that concert. I'm going to a concert tomorrow, you guys. It's the first one I've been to. Since the Backstreet Boys when I was in fifth grade. <laughs> so, I'm very, very cool. So I just wanted everybody to know how cool I was when I was going to a concert. I'm glad, okay. So, starting with your budget. Make sure it's in line, make sure it's healthy, make sure it's balanced. Next, you're gonna choose a repayment strategy. Now we like to joke in financial education that a budget or debt repayment is like a diet. Because the most effective diet is the one that you can stick to. That's how budgeting is, that's how debt repayment is. There's lots of days you can do it, but the most effective is gonna be whatever one you can stick to. So I want you to remember that goal that you thought of earlier. And now I'm gonna give you some techniques, some strategies to help pay down that debt. And I want you guys to be thinking of your lifestyle and your spending habits and maybe which one of these would be the most effective for you. So we're going to start with the strategies that we would most recommend and kind of work down. We're going to talk about contacting your creditors, bi-weekly methods, snowball, ladder, debt consolidation, and balance transfer. So contacting your creditors. This actually shouldn't be, well, we can make it work too, both ways. So Mount America, if you're having a hard time paying your bills, you can give us a call, and we have what's called a workout loan. We can extend your term, we can lower your payments, we can help you out, because nobody wins when you're not making your payments. Nobody wins in a repossession. It's not in the credit union's best interest, it's not in your best interest, so we're willing to work with you. So you can contact us. Now if you do this, make sure you know how much you can afford monthly, because we want to set you up for success. As a loan officer, anytime somebody would call to do this loan, and I would ask them, all right, how much can you afford for your monthly payment? You know what their answer always was? How low can you go? <laughs> so I'd be like, okay, well, I don't want to extend your term forever and not set you up for success that way. So review your budget, know how much you can afford, then contact your creditors. I would always say, you know what, go review your bills, contact me again with a payment that is going to be in your best interest. Now we also have one that, so you can sell your loans. This isn't necessarily the first place you should start, but this is definitely toward the end. So, well actually I'm gonna save that for the end. So first, one of the very first most effective ways is the bi-weekly method. Is anybody here paid bi-weekly? I'm paid bi-weekly. This is very effective because it takes minimal effort. And things that take minimal effort are the best, right? So let's start with bi-weekly. So how you do this is you set up, uh, like so you let's say got a thousand dollar thousand dollar home payment, mortgage payment. There we go, thousand dollar mortgage payment. So I'm going to set it up that every other week I pay five hundred dollars to my bank. Five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. Now I'm going to get twenty six paychecks this year, which means I'm going to end up making two extra payments with minimal effort. So with monthly payments. This one says 400. So 400, make 12 payments, well, uh, your yearly total, 1400. Now you set it up bi-weekly, but you split it in two, set up every other week. You're making two extra payments, so then 
pay 5,200 versus 4,800 for this. Now this is just one $400 bill. Can you imagine what, four, yeah. Can you imagine what this would look like if you did this with every single one of your bills? Would it start to make a difference? Absolutely, and again, minimal effort. You can just set this up to be making your, so your bi-weekly payments. Now some people, they're like, you know, I really like having those extra checks. A couple of extra checks a year is nice. And it is, but if your goal is debt repayment, if this is something that you prioritized, I guarantee you setting it up this way, not getting those extra paychecks, you're gonna be more worth it. You're gonna be paying more down. You're gonna be paying it down quicker. So it's the snowball method. Anybody heard the snowball method? Yeah, a few people. So while you do this one is you organize your bills from lowest to, to largest, like the balance. So right here, I've got every bank credit card for 1700, I've got my Visa for 24, my Capital One for 28, and my Honda Pilot for 16. So I'm going to organize it by the balance. Lowest to largest. Now I'm going to make my Epic Bank credit card. I've got a monthly payment of $50. Maybe I decide I'm gonna be paying $25 extra. So I change that to $75. I'm gonna be paying that off. I make it a bill to pay it off every month. Now as soon as that's paid off, I roll this $50 into this piece of platinum. So now every month I'm making 300, I'm sorry, 350 every single month. Then when I pay that off, I roll that same payment into my capital one. So now I'm making, instead of making a $100 payment, I'm making $450. Because I paid that one off, roll it to this one. Paid that one off, roll it to this one. I'm still making the same monthly payments, but I'm applying it to different debts. And then once I pay off this one, I'm gonna move to my car. So now instead of paying, thousand dollars. Oh sorry, with this one you pay three fifty one. So that one you're paying four hundred and fifty extra dollars a month. Now if you see for this example, this is how much more quickly you would pay it off if you did the snowball method versus this dotted line. That's how long it would have taken you had you just made your minimum monthly payments. So the total savings by snowball minimum payments is seven hundred and thirty five dollars. And 62 cents. And their debt free acceleration is two years. Again, this doesn't require maximum effort. This is just, you're already used to paying these debts. So then you just roll it over to the next one. Next is laddering. Laddering works identical to snowballing, except you organize your debt by highest interest. Now, why do you guys think that somebody, so if you're paying off your interest first, are you gonna be saving more money? The highest interest? Yeah. So if you can see up here, you saved 839. Still did it in two years, but you saved more money. So why would you even do the snowball method? Why would we even tell you about that? Psychology. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but you're right. Psychology, how come? <laughs> those moral victories. You're paying it off, you're like, yes, I did it, I can keep doing it. So again, this is whatever one is most effective for you, whatever one you can stick with. But the snowball method definitely has its place. And or I said, you can do the snowball method, you can do the ladder method. Organize it by balances or interest rate. Next is debt consolidation. So this example, I have four loans, A, B, C, and D. I call Not America and say, I would like to consolidate my loans. We do one loan for you and pay off the other ones. Now, someone's telling me a danger of consolidating your loans. It can never not necessarily be a bad thing because it might get your payments in order. <laughs> Man, <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Working with you, yeah, that's flexible. Um, we just freed up all those credit lines for you to max out again, and you're not, you're not guilty about it. Yeah, so back in the day, we used to be able to send things to close down. 
clones. Like we, like we, like make the member sign something, we send it to their institution, and it would close down their other loans. We can't do that now. That's completely up to the member. So we can't leave. It. So now that you've got this nicely consolidated loan, but then if you're not careful, you might have this nicely consolidated loan and all these other loans. So what do you guys think you do? What should be your first step? You consolidate your loans. What's your next step? Closing all those other ones. Absolutely, set yourself up for success. <laughs> so we consolidated our loan. We closed our other ones like nice, responsible people. I've lost a lot of those this year as well. The whole client credit line was you know, closed down. Yes, so that is a very good point. It's your longest line of credit. Closing it could affect, I mean, closing it could affect your credit score. But I always tell people to keep in mind, is it going to hurt your credit score more by closing that one? Or if you are going to be tempted to run that and max it out again, that'll probably end up affecting it a little bit more. It's completely up to you, but that is very true, so thank you for saying that. So a few ways you can consolidate your loans. Secured loan, home equity, and a credit card. With a secured loan, this is basically where a lot of people use these to build their credit. So they'll come in and, so I have, so for example, I have a younger brother, and he went, he got his master's at BYU, he had a bunch of student loans, and then he got, he got hired on to Amazon as a financial analyst. And he got a signing bonus. So he wanted to pay off all of his student loans. And he had, he had zero, I mean, he had his student loan like credit. But basically, other than that, like zero credit. So I suggested, I was like, this might be something you might want to look into. He took that signing bonus, brought it to North America. So it was $50,000. He put it in a, a savings account. Mount America basically puts a hold on that money. And then we gave him $50,000 and we paid off his student loans. So then he was making his monthly payment to us on this secured loan. The interest rate was a little bit lower because he had gotten some high interest student loans. But he was also able to keep track of it better. So secured loans, again, you kind of give us the money first and then we give you the, like I said, you pay off your other loans. It doesn't work for everybody, but it is an option. Um, home equity line. That's pretty straightforward. You have equity in your home, you use that. Now again though, we do urge you to be cautious with this because if your spending habits are out of control, the last thing you want to do is maybe put your home at risk. So we say try to make sure that you're, you know, you're committed to this goal. Pay down those credit cards as much as you can. You feel like you're responsible if you're gonna pay down, now you're gonna use your home equity line. And then a credit card. We'll talk more about credit cards. So here's your here's our three loans. This is what a financial analyzer looks like in North America. So credit card one, credit card two, and your home equity. And we're going to use our home equity to roll these in, to, these two into our home equity. So here are our balances. We rolled it into the home equity, we refinanced. Our new balance is the same as those were, but we have a much lower interest rate. Now, instead of paying 11.99 and 12%, and our home equity line was a little bit higher too. We're now paying 5.13%, saving us. So before interest, that's what we were gonna be paying, we saved us $8,100. That's significant. So if you have those high interest credit cards and you roll them into your equity, it could be a good option for you. Balance transfer. So this is where you're gonna transfer your credit cards to one credit card. So I took these two. 8,000, 2,000, I got a new credit card for 10,000. I had a 15.99 interest rate and a 23.99 interest rate. Which seems high, but those are totally normal interest rates. I saw that all the time as a loan officer. And 8.99 is what Bank of America is currently at, right? No, 9.99, you need to update our slide. 9.99 for a total savings of $3,100. Now this is a balance transfer fee right there, 300. Mountain America does run promotions where we don't do a balance transfer fee. We actually don't have any balance transfer fee. Oh, balance transfer fee. Nice. Not That's awesome. Better news for you guys. Never do a balance transfer fee. Save $3,100. And like your balance is exactly the same, just purely interest. Some additional options. So reverse mortgage. Reverse mortgage is, this is the example I gave. If you're older and you own your home, Maybe you've got a lot of medical bills coming in, you don't have a lot of extra income, but you have this home, it's paid off, it has all this equity in it, but it does you no good. So you can do a reverse mortgage where the credit union or the financial institution gives you a lump sum of money, 
or they give it to you monthly. And you can use that, and they use it from your home. Now, you don't have to make monthly payments on that. Once you sell the home, or you pass away, then it is paid from the earnings from the home, like the equity from the home. So a reverse mortgage can be an option. Borrow against your life insurance. Now this isn't like your term life insurance. This is, it's like if you purchase like a million dollar life insurance on your spouse, which means you're probably going to kill them. Right? <laughs> so you can, I've, I've watched enough Dateline, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you think I'm also, I'm also like a self-help book junkie, I'm also a Dateline junkie. Like, to the point I just stopped because I started like planning my death. I'd be like walking out of Target and I'd be like, and that was the last camera I've ever seen on them. <laughs> so, I'm actually not allowed to watch Dateline anymore. So if you buy this million dollar life insurance policy, you can borrow against it to pay your debt off, but that kind of defeats the purpose of a life insurance policy, but it is an option. These again are what we normally like, the top things we recommend, but we want to let you know that they're available and educate you on them. Next is borrowing against your 401k. Not something that we would recommend, but it's something that you will hear why do you guys think people recommend you do not do this? And Mount America doesn't either. We don't recommend you do this. So it's intended for your retirement. Yeah, exactly. The purpose of it is intended for your retirement. Also, large penalties, large fees, and then the money, and not just that, not just the penalties and the fees, but the money you took out, if you had left it in the 401k, it would continue to earn money. It would continue to grow. So you lost out on all that growth as well. Next is debt settlement. So debt settlement is where, let's say I, I'm drowning in debt, I'm trying to avoid bankruptcy. I can call a creditor and I can say, you know, I know I owe $1,000 on this loan. Can I pay 700 and we settle it? And then the creditor will say, yes, we can do that. So they close it. It does show on your credit as settled, which will impact your credit negatively, but it is a better option than bankruptcy. So if you're trying, to say, trying to get your head above water a little bit, this is an option that you have in settling your debt. And then the last one is bankruptcy or foreclosure. Again, we don't, we want to try to do anything we can before this point, but if you feel, like I said, we're not recommending bankruptcy or foreclosure, we're just letting you know that this is out there, you will hear about it, some people are like, oh, just, just declare bankruptcy. There's nothing that you can do. That's not always the case. Come talk to us, contact Green Path, there are so many, I gave you so many other examples before this. Let's make sure that all of your resources are exhausted before you get to that. <clears throat> Again, just like dying, the most effective method to pay off debt is whatever one you can stick to. Whatever one you think is going to fit your lifestyle best. Uh, my husband and I, we switched to the bi-weekly method for our mortgage, and we pay that off every, um, because, again, minimal effort, you guys. Like, that's, that's my motto in life. <laughs> so as you leave here today, these are the things we want you to do. We want you to organize your debt. We want you to commit to stop accruing more debt. Commit to that however you can. Share that goal with people. Make yourself a vision board. Write down your goals. However you can do it, commit to no more debt. Seek professional advice. Review your budget. And then choose a debt repayment strategy. You guys, so if you guys have any questions, Tony right here, he's also with Mountain America. He is our VP of uh, Financial Education. Our Amanda can answer any questions, or I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Other than that, you guys, thank you guys so much for coming.